Now let's go ahead and learn that how we can register and schedule notifications. Just like the reminder application on your iPhone, which is a native iOS application from Apple, if you set up some sort of a scheduled notification or a scheduled reminder, then you are going to get a local notification telling you that, hey, something is due. So this means that over here you can see I have reminder three edit and car service. So on the 30th of January, it will tell me around 1 p.m. that, well, there's a car service. So let's go ahead and see how we can schedule it. In order to schedule our notification, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and add a notification manager. Notification manager. And the reason that I'm adding a notification manager is that this is going to be kind of like a top layer or on top of the actual notification. So this will be responsible for checking for notifications. Let's go ahead and add, or actually shouldn't call it notification manager. We should just call it managers because we can have other managers also. And now we can go ahead and add a brand new surf file. We can call it notification manager. Great. Class notification manager. Okay, so the notification manager will only have one simple function, which will allow us to schedule the notification. So we'll call it schedule notification. And we will need to pass in some user data that needs to be scheduled. You can call it user data, you can call it notification data, that is kind of up to you. But what user data actually is, is that it consists of different fields that you can use to schedule the notification or the things that we want the notification to have, like the title, the body, the date and time. And you can see that all of them are nullable because it is possible that everything is null, although title shouldn't be null, so you can take care of that. We will also import user notifications. Next up, we will create a UN mutable notification content. So we'll call it content UN mutable notification content. This is going to dictate that what kind of a content will be displayed in the notification. And this is where we can take the user data or title or else we can simply put empty. Now, if you don't like empty, you can put some sort of a title. I'm just going to leave it empty. And the same exact thing can be done for the body. Now, if you're thinking what will be the body, because we never wrote any body for a reminder, well, body will be notes. Okay. Next up, we will check out the date components. So this is where we will discuss that when the notification is going to be set. So we're gonna create a date component from year, month, day, hour, minute from the user date. And if you don't have a date, we will go ahead and use the correct one, all right? Now, sometime we will have the date, sometime we will have the time, sometime we will have both. So that's why if you have the date, then we will use that date. If you don't have the date, but you have the time, then we'll use the current date as today. Next, we will go ahead and get the reminder time. User data dot time. And this is where we can go ahead and create our, or get our reminder date components and set the reminder date components or date component itself. We can check out the uh, time as well as the date. Okay, so we'll say date components dot hour equals to reminder date components dot hour and then date components 
dot minute, which will be the minor date components dot minute. All right. And the final thing we need to do is to trigger it. So we will create a trigger for the date component or for our notification. And you can see that we're passing repeat false because we don't really want this notification to be repeating all the time. We have used the calendar notification trigger, which is based on the date component. So whatever the value of this date component is, and you can see the value is actually changing because based on the time, if you have time, then it's gonna change or else it's just gonna be based on the date. And next, we can go ahead and create a notification request. Now the notification request is going to take in the content as well as a trigger and some sort of identifier. So this identifier, you can write the name anything you want, but make sure this is unique. And then we can say UN user notification current dot add the request and passing in the request. Great. So if we pass in the user data with the correct information, this will schedule a notification for us. But now the question is, well, where should we even call this? Let's go back to our reminder detail view. You can see that in the reminder detail view, we are, when we press the done button, we get the update reminder and the update reminder basically asks us that, okay, if it has been updated or not, but we were kind of like ignoring it. So let's go ahead and get that value in the updated. If it is updated, then probably we can do something. So what should we do in this case is if it's updated? Well, first of all, we should check if we should even schedule a notification. Hmm. Well, how can we check that we're supposed to be, you know, checking for the notification or not? I mean, what do we even check over here? We can simply check if the reminder dot has a reminder date. So we have the reminder over here, reminder dot, reminder dot, reminder date. Not sure why it's not uh, picking up over here, but if the reminder dot reminder date is not equal to nil and reminder dot reminder time is not equal to an R, basically R. So if the reminder date is not equal to null or reminder time is not equal to null, then it means that we should probably go ahead and uh, you know send the reminder. So we will create the user data over here. This will be user data. And you can see that we have to pass in several different things over here in the user data. If I open this up, I have to pass in the title for the user data. That can be reminder.title. We have reminder.notes as the body, as we mentioned earlier on. We have reminder.reminder date. And we have reminder dot reminder time. So now we have the user data. The next and the final step is to use our notification manager to schedule the notification, user data. And that's it. So this is hopefully going to schedule us a notification for our application. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this and see that if we receive the notification or not. But in order to receive the notification, we may have to first enable that, are we even allowed to get the notification? And we need to ask the, the application, we need to ask the user that, are you even allowing us to access the notification? So we're gonna jump into the reminders app file and over here, we are going to write some code to ask or request for authorization for the notification. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the init function. And let's go ahead and import user notifications. 
user notifications. And now we can say un user notification center dot current dot request authorization. And in the request authorization, we can actually pass in a couple of different things like options uh, for alert so that we can see the alert and for sound and for the badge that displays the count. It's going to return you to a closure with two different arguments, the granted or whether it is successful or not. If it is granted, meaning the notification is good, then you can go ahead and do whatever you want. All right, like uh, notification is granted. Else you can probably display some error, display message to the user or whatever you want to do in, in that case, okay? Let's go ahead and run it again. Now when I run this, the first thing I notice is that there's a dialogue in our screen and it is telling me that, would you like to enable notification? I'm gonna say yes. And now let's go ahead and add a particular task. So let's go ahead and add a reminder. I'm gonna go ahead and say reminder with notification. And I want to make sure that this particular reminder is going to be fired on today, but maybe a minute from now. Okay, there we go. Hopefully the notification is already set. Oh, but I didn't get out, so probably, so I need to make sure that I'm out of the app so that when the notification is set, then I'll be able to check out the notification. Not a big deal. We can go ahead and change the timer to be 241 and hopefully I'm able to get out of there at on time. There we go, so I'm out now. Because if you are in the app, you're not really going to see those notifications. So now we're simply looking for 241 because I believe that's what I said for the notification to be triggered. And as soon as 241 is fired and if we see the notification, that means that our code for setting up the notification and the code for granting the access and everything is working correctly. So we're still waiting for one more minute to pass and hopefully it will be quick and we'll see that if we are able to see. There we go, we saw the notification. See that? You just saw it right there. So looks like it's working correctly, right? So notification is done, this is great. You can also see the scheduled ones, that is fine. Now, one of the things that we really want to work on is how will the app actually look like in the dark mode and the light mode. In the dark mode, it looks fine, but we definitely can make sure to improve it. So in the next few lectures, we'll be going through the app and making sure that it works correctly with the dark mode and the light mode. And we will also create our own little bit custom colors to replace different aspects of the app. Hey, if you have enjoyed this video and want to learn more about iOS development, then check out my website, awesomesharp.school. This is one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. You can simply go to awesomesharp.school, click on the courses, and you can see all the list of all the courses that I have. And I'm always working on new courses. I'm trying to update existing courses. Check out these amazing courses, Full Stack iOS Development Bootcamp. This is where you will learn how to do Swift UI with Vapor, server-side Swift. This is one of the only courses that is available anywhere online. So this is a great course. And we have the Core Data Bootcamp. And apart from Core Data Bootcamp, Swift Data Bootcamp. If you want to learn more about the architecture for Swift UI, then I have a course for you, the MV design pattern. Apart from that, testament development, create ML, and so much more. So anything related to iOS development, I have course on that. And you can purchase these courses for one-time pricing, and all the pricing are listed over here, or you can sign up for the monthly membership. And the great thing about monthly membership is that it gives you access to the 22 comprehensive courses, 130 hours of videos, digital books, 
and not only the current courses, but also future courses. And you know that I'm always working on courses. Apart from that, I also host workshops. Now these workshops are live workshops uh, hosted over Zoom. They are two and a half to three hours long, very hands-on. And I've hosted a couple of different workshops. They were very well received and attendees, they learn a lot. So my new workshop is coming up, Swift Data Fundamentals, April 6, 2024. Then I have workshop planned for testing also on April 27. And I have some other workshop that I'm planning for machine learning in iOS and Swift UI fundamentals and so on. So you definitely check out azamsharp.school and check out all of my courses, check out the workshops. This is really the number one resource if you're trying to move your career ahead. And if you are going from that junior to a senior developer, then this is a website for you, all right? So check out azamsharp.school. Thank you.